So, if I uh, deconstruct the topic of today's discussion, so we have three to four things on agenda. One, post 2000. Second, peace process. And third, the challenges to this peace process. So, without uh, going into the nitty gritties of India Pakistan conflict, which you all know, I think, before you were born. So we used to tell stories about the bloody Indian designs right when the child is in the womb of his mother. I will not go into that detail. I will just let you know uh, my thesis, the thesis on India-Pakistan peace process and then the thesis on Kashmir. Although the chapter on Kashmir is related to um, my thesis on India and Pakistan uh, peace process. So one bottom line which I wrote is that this whole security dilemma between India and Pakistan is an elite constructed one because this serves their own purpose and their interests are all parochial. Secondly, part of the thesis is there are enough grounds, there are enough normative grounds on the basis of which we can construct a security community between India and Pakistan. So that is a very, very provocative statement. But hats off to uh, Western academia, they give you a free hand. Where there is an environment, where there is no pressures and there is no lynching of intellectual honesty. So let's briefly deconstruct. I will not go into the details of the book. The book name is Security Community in South Asia, colon, India, Pakistan. And mind you, the book got the outstanding research award, none other than from the government of Pakistan by the Higher Education Commission. It was published by Routledge. And Alhamdulillah, so far it has crossed these sales records from South Asia. Okay, so let's deconstruct briefly the main argument. So I took the case study of uh, Kashmir and uh, the nuclear proliferation in this region. So there I brought up the idea that usually it's the elites and then I defined the elites. What does it mean? The elites simply does not mean you have the state elites. It also means someone who has a following, someone who can block the roads, someone who can pester, someone who can interest articulate, he can do interest articulation and he can put things on the table of the state makers. So these are the elites. But if we boil it down, so I came across that usually it is the Hindu fundamental bodies in India and usually it's the Pakistan army in Pakistan who have constructed this rivalry for their own interest. And then all along I also came across very uh, interesting points, just uh, two or three interesting points for example. We uh, in 1965 carried the slogan of liberating Kashmir and we started operation Gibraltar. Not a single Kashmiri stood behind Pakistan army. That was kind of a shock for me that from 1947 to 65, we started the war on the behest of the Kashmiris. Not a single Kashmiri is behind us. And then there are more interesting points. Points like, interestingly, whenever there is a military dictator in Pakistan, he has this thing that he want to resolve Kashmir. His motivation is, is to resolve Kashmir. And when that same person is the chief of army staff, he want to invade Kashmir for his own interest. A classic example is General Musharraf, with whom our beloved resource person Saad Malik has worked a lot. So we have Kargil and that Kargil started when we have, I'm just giving you a brief Synopsis of what does I mean by elite constructed rivalry. 
so we have vajpay over here and he entered uh, lahore declaration and that was a very symbolic occasion that prime minister of our enemy has come to minare pakistan and signed this lahore declaration without any uh, thing going on in his thought processes that after 2 months we have kargil going on in july 1999 and interestingly that army chief when he became chief uh, executive uh, under which uh, our uh, honorable chief guest has also worked so he drafted the four point agenda on kashmir that four point agenda means demilitarization of the area then uh, number 2 giving a kind of a semi autonomous autonomy to the region number 3 joint supervision of kashmiris indians and they have killed millions i board a train from hay from amsterdam it goes straight to germany from germany to paris paris to austria austria to switzerland coming back to italy and again to hay and nobody checks my green passport i was at a loss so i look into those grounds on which we can construct a kind of a workable security command i'm not talking about demering of water or becoming an amalgamated one union union i'm talking about protecting the territory but still having transactional interest going on why our onions and tomatoes have to go to dubai and then we have to waste our foreign exchange reserves on that we can go vaga by foot and the symbolism going on in vaga people used to have march pass by flying their legs 6 feet up into the sky and that ceremony has to be live broadcast for all of you what stupidity is going on in the 21st century and this third decade of 21st century are you insane so then i look towards the normative grounds here the first thing i came across both states societies is what type of education we are inculcating towards our children because education is very very important there is no peace without education education has a great role to play so there i boiled boiled down to the books of pakistan studies and also india has the indian history and both these curriculum are compulsory these curriculum are compulsory because no one can get a, even a university degree without studying pakistan studies so then i did a content analysis of what is being taught in those books and again the results were shocking as kk aziz has already told us the murder of history our mosques are neat and clean and airy and beautiful their mandars are dirty shabby suffocating our women are full of piety because they wear the dress which covered their uh, womanhood their women are dirty because they wear sarees this type of venom we are inculcating in the brains of a grade of a, a fourth grader and from fourth grade till university we are reinforcing and interestingly what we see the other uh, part we have luminaries like intezar hussain sadat hasan manto faiz ahmed chirag hasan asrar they are being decorated by the state itself we have manto aman mela we have faiz aman mela the state is lynching them when they are at the height of their uh, intellectual thrust and now we are in the habit of garlanding them let's see what they talk about in their stories what manto has said, tell us what faiz has tell, told us poignantly they talk about the nostalgia they talk about a community feeling 
which is not being allowed to propagate. And then I also came across the censorship regime. The censorship regime, when I want to write a textbook, what type of guidance is given by Punjab textbook board that you have to write this, this, this. You should always tell what you are being told to tell. We never started the 1960 war. We didn't do anything wrong in Kargil. And then I also did a discourse analysis of Indian films because Pakistani film industry is long dead, died. So there also they wrote these censorships to their respective uh, film producers that let the Pakistani flag be burnt into ashes, no Indian flag will come down. So it's a very heart wrenching story of what our elites are habitual of doing for the past 70 plus years of history of this state. And still they are spot free. So coming back to the third part, which is of Kashmir, there I, when I uh, did a kind of a content, and I, and mind you, I never consulted any Indian author or a Pakistani author. Because that is the prereq of doing a PhD over there. No biasness should come out of it. So in order to balance that, I looked towards the author and to the original text. So when I was looking towards the original text on Kashmir, I also came across very interesting points. Points like, in Kashmir, the spread of Islam is without any violence. They have a Rishi tradition and that Rishi tradition is based on Sufism and that gives equality to a co-religionist. Pandit has no problem in marrying or in going to the house of a Muslim. And they also have a desire of self-rule. It's a 1000 year plus history of what is going on in that. The thing gets turbulent once it was sold to that Dogra Raja. And I was looking towards the evidence that, okay, we started 65 war. Look how many Kashmiris have risen after our Herculean efforts. Not a single one. So, my dear students, if you want to enjoy the dividends of peace like what the Europe have enjoyed by formulating European Union with 27 states, you have to grow out of it. Otherwise, mind you, till your judgment day, you will be having the same story, you will be having the same elites and you will be concocted into that cocktail. Thank you very much.